in the rising of the sun and its going down. And the invocation is, we shall remember her, O Lord. We shall remember her, O Lord. In the blowing of the winds and the chill of winter, we shall remember her, O Lord. In the rustling of the leaves and the beauty of autumn, we shall remember her, O Lord. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we shall remember her, O Lord. When we are weary and in need of strength, we shall remember her, O Lord. When we are lost and sick at heart, we shall remember her, O Lord. When we have joys that we are to share, we shall remember her, O Lord. In times of prayer and in your presence, we shall remember her, O Lord. In the midst of trouble and needing help, we shall remember her, O Lord. So long as we live, so too shall she live, for she is now part of us as we remember her. In the name of the Son of God, of the Spirit of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you. The old people, you say, and they were able to make sense of everything. It said they said that, and they understood and believed. Happy is the bride on whom the sun shines on, and happy is the corpse on whom the rain falls upon. So we have to go by the amount of rain falling at the minute. We have a very happy and contented woman here with us. I think that is actually true. Happy, content, and fulfilled. I want to begin by putting light over here in the side chapel. Since I came to Innes, it was over here that Mrs. Coffey, as I knew her, you must come for her mass. I'll get you to mind it there, Deirdre. Just put it there, it wasn't always, maybe that's it, but it was on this side. She was a woman of faith, deep, deep faith, that coloured everything in her life. A woman of extraordinary generosity and of heart. The lights in the centre are from yesterday, from our weekend liturgy, uh, celebrating harvest, and the little uh, reflection that goes with it. The Lord has given its harvest. God, our God, has blessed us. And it's equally apt for the life and the times of Mary Margaret Coffey. There are two bouquets of flowers that I want to put into the sacred space. The smaller one represents the great-grandchildren, 11, and the bigger one represents the grandchildren, 31. And we're missing five, so we'll come back to them in a little minute. They can't be here physically, but they're certainly here in terms of love and of heart and of gathering. And we'll make them present by naming them. So in Faraway, Australia, in Canberra, Dermot, in Toronto, Sean, in Boston, Sarah, and in Milan, Juliana and Martina. So those are little words of gathering into the space and into the company of each other we come. And by way of setting the scene, I want to share with you these words of a, a Waterford man who was blessed with the gift of words, and he wrote these words after his mam died. I feel no anger at your death, flailing and floundering though I am. 
in loss. More an upsurge of gratitude for the way you blessed us. We have known the bounty of autumn and settle into winter with the harvest of rich apples. As we begin our prayer time, those of you who knew and loved and lived and were neighbours and part of the life and the times of Mary Margaret, I want you to just go to one memory, and there's no shortage, just one memory, a particular memory and occasion, maybe it was sampling the apple tart, maybe it was trying on the clothes that she made, maybe it was a lovely smile, maybe it was chatting, whatever, just take one memory. In our faith tradition, we are called to greatness, to let the light shine. And we know that in our lives we're blessed with love, with family, with community, but we also have feet that are of clay and we carry lacunas and shortcomings. And so we acknowledge the need all of us have for reassurance and encouragement and affirmation as we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may the Almighty God continue to help us on the journey. May the Almighty God affirm us and enable us. And one day, may the Almighty God welcome us into the company of the blessed. So we create a little stillness for you to whisper your own intention and prayer. Maybe it is for Mary Margaret, maybe it is for her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Or maybe you have another intention you bring this morning. You carry a worry or an upset. Maybe there's someone sick. Maybe life is difficult at the minute. Or just maybe you have a great sense of thankfulness to have your own parents still alive, to have grandparents, to have known love and goodness in your life. Eternal God, you made the union of man and woman a sign of the bond between Christ and the church. Grant peace now to our mam, to our mama, to our friend and neighbour who was united in love a lifetime with her Tom Jo. May the care and devotion of her life on earth find a lasting reward. And look kindly on her children, on her grandchildren, on her great-grandchildren, all who are heartbroken and sad because of her passing. Strengthen their faith, lighten their hope, and this we ask through Christ our Lord. So we listen now to God's word, and I invite two of our grandchildren, Deborah and Thomas, to come and lead us in the readings. And all the grandchildren are involved in the liturgy today. So the first reading the family have chosen is from the prophet Isaiah, with his lovely words of consolation and hope. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Truly God is my salvation. I trust, I shall not fear, for the Lord is my strength, my song, he became my saviour. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples, declare the greatness of his name. Sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth, People of Zion, sing and shout for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second reading that the family have chosen from Paul, and Paul was a mighty man for letters, and even mightier for words of affirmation and reassurance, as this reading is. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Nothing can come between us and the love of Christ. Even if we are troubled or worried, or being persecuted, or lacking food and clothes, or being threatened, or even attacked. These are the trials through which we triumph, by the power of him who loved us. For I am certain of this, neither death nor life, no angel, no prince, nothing that exists, nothing still to come, not any power, or height, or depth, nor any created thing, can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I invite you to stand and with Regina we'll sing our Alleluia. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still, and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. If you have been to Mrs. Coffey's house in Tuberté Scon, you know it's a, a home of memory and the place is full of photographs. But there was one in particular that caught my eye. It's the photograph of her great grandchild's baptism, Lily. She's there with Lily and with uh, Emma. Uh, and it's framed in a frame that has written on it, Live laugh, love. And I said to myself, doesn't that sum it up? Live, laugh, and love. I didn't know Mrs. Coffey very well, but I knew her, and I had a particular affinity for her in terms of not only the countenance of her face, but her presence. She's a very special woman. All of us are unique and special. And in some of us had that extra little bit. And the, the words of Peg Sayers come to mind in thinking about and reflecting on the life and times of Mary Margaret. The Vig Elihedown Arish. She's an old timer. And the likes, can I suggest, will not have again. Because the values she lived her life by. Maybe they're a little bit like the fashion. If they haven't gone, they're certainly gone. And the three Fs in her life, I think, were central. Family above all. She 
was a West Clare woman born into life on the 12th of October in the year of the Shannon Scheme, 1927. One of three, and her two brothers predeceased her. And she fell in love with this handsome young man, Tom Joe Coffey, and they made a life together that endured. A life that wasn't simple and certainly wasn't easy, a life of hard work, but they worked together. 53 St Michael's was the place they came to make home and rear family. And blessed was your mum and dad by all ten of you, five boys, five girls. And you can only begin to imagine the rule of Bula and the hard work and trying to get never sorted and organised. But that's the way it was. And like the African proverb, it takes a village to wear a child. St. Michael's had that wonderful spirit of community. And so into that, she came to live and be part of and enrich. I heard someone say on Friday after she passed that if you ate Mrs. Coffey's apple tart, you'd never eat anyone else's. She had just wonderful gift of not only the pastry and the apple tart, but a wonderful gift of cooking and bacon and family. So that was the first F. The second F is the F of faith. She imbued this sense of the sacred. Now she loved her prayers and loved her way of doing things. And it's for each of us to discover for ourselves how we connect. Rosary's on so some and Novena's on so others. But you have to find your own way because no greater gift, no better way of being able to enjoy and enfold and encounter and cope with life than the gift of faith. And she had that. And that's why that candle over there beside your dear job, it represents the, per the presence of a person who not only was physically here, but in our living and loving, she reflected the God that we believe in. And the third F, can I suggest, is the F of friendship. She had it. Whatever it was, in terms of her DNA, she was positive, life-given, affirming, welcoming, just lovely to be with. And yesterday evening, I know I shouldn't have been there, but I was, to see the raw pain of great-grandchildren and grandchildren being shedding tears because their mama was about to take the journey in her. Isn't it lovely that if you're in your life, you make that imprint that not only your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren and the neighbours, they feel the less because of your part. Surely something must have been done right. And the last little thought before I invite the grandchildren to bring the symbols is from Martin O'Diran, writing about his mother when she passed, Eilika Mawar. And they're lovely lines. He says, I remember a hand that dispensed kindness like an old Bible, a hand like balsam when you were in. The priest isn't supposed to give a panegyric at a funeral. He's supposed to keep it narrow and simple and focused and give the theology of life and death and resurrection. You don't have to give any theology about Margaret Mary Coffey's life because she was, she is, and she will be a reflection of what you believe in. For not gone from us, but gone merely before us. So I invite now two of our grandchildren on beautiful slow air, Joyce, and Aoife to give the commentary as you present symbols of Mama's life. Alana brings Mama's prayers to the altar. Mama had deep faith in Jesus Christ.
Maeve brings Mama's little teacup to the altar. Relationships were very important to Mama and she used endless cups of tea to nurture us. Kira brings a miniature sewing kit, a sewing machine to the altar. Mama worked as a dressmaker for many years of her life. Katie brings a family photo to the altar. Mama's family were at the centre of her life and she was at the centre of ours. Stephen and Leanne bring the gifts of bread and wine for today's Eucharist. You can remain seated now for Gui and Fogel, the prayer of the faithful, and I invite our grandchildren, Emma, Hugh, Roshan, and Owen, to lead us. And Father Tom, our neighbour from St. Michael's, will introduce the prayers. We come before the Lord this day to present the soul of Mrs. Coffey after a life of work and hard work. We present our needs as we give thanks for a life well lived. Now that Mama has come to the end of her earthly journey, may Christ give her a place at the banquet of the Kingdom of Heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who mourn today, especially those who cannot be with us, Giuliano, Martino, Sarah, Sean and Dermot, May they receive strength to assist them in their sadness and grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who care for the sick and dying, especially those who cared for Mama in her illness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who have died, especially Mama's family, friends and neighbours. May God unite them all in the happiness and peace of his heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We take a moment for a silent prayer. O oh Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over, our work is done. Then Lord, in your great mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest and peace at last. And this is the prayer we make this morning through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the gifts couldn't be any simpler, the few little bits of bread and the few drops of wine. Remember the memory I asked you to uh, go to at the beginning? Will you bring that now present and with the bread and the wine we offer that memory and the life, laughter and love of Margaret Mary to our God. Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us 
and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and with contrite hearts. So with the burning incense, that's the smoke coming from the charcoal. We just bless the bread and the wine. We bless the sacred space. We bless all of you for the memory you have and for the prayers of your heart and the prayers of your spirit. We say together, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. And so in faith and in hope, on this October morning, we gather with a sense of thankfulness for the life and for the times of our mam, of our mama, of our Margaret Mary. And whatever lacunas or shortcomings were part of our living and loving, may they be overlooked. And may the goodness of our life be welcomed into the company of the blessed. And may you become present to us. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Grave and tear the live. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks to Jesus Christ our Lord. In him who rose from the dead, our hope of resurrection dawned. The sadness of death gives way to the bright promise of immortality. Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. And so with all the powers of the angels, we join the hymn of praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So I invite you to sit or to kneel, whatever way you're comfortable. You are indeed holy, Lord, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And so we ask you, Lord, that by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And once more giving thanks and praise, he gave the cup to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And with song now, we acclaim that faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your family of faith, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with Mary, the mother of Jesus, with the apostles and martyrs and saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray you, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with Francis our hope and the entire people your son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have brought before you this day. In compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Mary Margaret, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters too, remember in a special way today Tom Joe and all the circle of love and family of Mary Margaret, all those souls who were pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. Because it is there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. And we pray, through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to stand. Each of us bears a family name, and in and through our baptism, we become part of God's family, and that's why we dare to say, Ar nahar et ar nav, into the holler and dar of Maranen through our nav. On the run, they hold to doing in you. I was Mahadona of Yerka, Marawahamid of Ekona Fed. It's not the Shinny Gaho, Axer Shin Oak. Ser Shin Ogakol can pay me, Doctor Hirna. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Mary Margaret certainly believed in the power of prayer, and she was faithful in her holy hour here, almost up to the very end. And as the hymn says, in spite of dungeon, fire and sword, she came. So as we pray the peace prayer, can we pray this prayer especially for our children, all ten of them, for the five girls, Marion and Bernadette, Elizabeth, Margaret and Claire, and our five boys, each special and unique, Michael, Thomas, Anthony, Martin and Paul. I know that you were able to do and give the care to your man because of your partners and because of your children. So we remember uh, all the, the in-laws and the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren, we pray for each other. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Now, some people have a problem with handshaking. That's fair enough. Don't have to handshake. Here are the options. You can wink, you can smile, you can do a high five, you can give a hug, you can do a nod or a wave, but connect anyhow with those around you.
a wind de hovis packy on down, then throw roaring. A wind de hovis packy on down, then throw roaring. A wind de hovis packy on down, to a doing sheer calm. Holy Mass was the way in which Margaret Mary expressed her community faith, and she was faithful here to the Eucharist. And again, in spite of dungeon, fire, and sword, she came. And often I suppose she shouldn't be here because of sickness or pain, but she wanted to come. So on the day in which we hand her back to the God that she believed in and loved and put centre to her life, we are invited to partake in the Holy Eucharist, in the breaking of the bread, in the drinking of the cup. Shohe, O Inde. This is the Lamb of God, this is Jesus present. Happy are we who gather by that faith and come in that hope as we pray. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you under my roof, but I say the word, and my soul shall be. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I give you my heart and my soul. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, assist me now in my last agony. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, may I breathe forth my soul in peace with you. In St. Anthony's in Tuberté, Scone, you couldn't help but notice the central place that the Sacred Heart has in the living room. And it has its little lamp in front of it. I don't think I ever saw it before. Left and right are two little containers uh, to hold flowers. And they were regularly uh, filled with flowers, either artificial or fresh, depending on the occasion. As we come to the conclusion of our prayer time, this little piece is from the Galway poet Rita Ann Higgins. It's about memory. It's about connecting. It's about home, about values, family, and life. It's entitled The Power of Prayer. I liked the way my mother got off her bike to the side while the bike was still moving, graceful as a bird. We watched out for her after benediction. It was a game. Who saw the headscarf first? I nearly always won. The day the youngest drank paraffin oil, we didn't know what to do. All goofed up around the gable. We watched, we waited, headscarf over the hill. Knowing there was something wrong, she threw the bike down and ran. She cleared fences with the ailing child. Mrs. Bourke gave a spoon of jam. The child was saved. Marched indoors, we feared the worst. Our mother knew what the problem was. Not enough prayers are being said in this house. So while the paraffin child bounced in her cot, we prayed and prayed. We did the creed, a blast of the Beatitudes. The black fast was mentioned, the confitia was said like it was never said before. Maria Garotti was called on, and so was Marta. And we climaxed on the Magnificat. After all that, it was all personal stuff. I liked the way my mother got off her bike to the side while the bike was still moving, graceful as a bird. For good neighbours with Jan, for the Pope's intentions, for God's holy will, for the conversion of Russia, for the forgiveness of sins, for something of saints, for Dr. Noel Brown, for the lads in the Congo, for everyone in Biafra, for Uncle Andy's crazy bowl, for ingrown toenails, and above all, for the grace of a happy death. Marion, her first child, speaking on behalf of family, is going to draw all our prayer into the final circle. Good morning. Good morning, Marion. Thanks, Tom. I think you almost summed up my mother there without me saying anything because we had all those at home too, all those prayers, the litany. My father, you say, the rosary is fine once Mary Margaret doesn't do the litany. It will be <laughs> grand. Well, thinking of Mam's life, Mama's life for a lot of you, the image of a patchwork quilt came to my mind. A wonderful quilt of many colours, representing all she held dear and valued most in life. Family, friends and neighbours. The quilt is large, a patch for each one of us. Our name on it, sewn together by Mam's loving hands. Hands that held us and dried our tears. She shaped us from our childhood. 
not through words alone, but through her shining example of gentleness, kindness, generosity, patience, support and encouragement, and most of all, love. She knew us. She saw the best in us and in everyone she ever met. Praying hands. We all know the wonderful faith Ma'am was blessed with. Hours were spent saying her prayers. Candles were lit for all our intentions, cares and needs. But remember, what's for you won't pass you. Hands that sewed, knit and baked. Ma'am was a renowned seamstress who sewed endlessly and could knit for Ireland. And of course, she just loved to bake. The tastes of orange, coffee and Chester cakes, brown bread and griddle bread will always bring ma'am to our minds. Can you see her now? She just cleared off a space on the table. That's all she needed. Getting out the bowl, the ingredients, and away she went. Next you knew there were wonderful smells filling the house. As time went by, however, she could no longer fulfill this role. And then the real fun began. We all got to relearn the skills of childhood days. And again, we had to mix cakes and knead bread. It did not matter what your culinary skills were. To man, you needed careful instruction and a watchful eye and don't forget to shake holy water on that before you put it in the oven. <laughs> when all was complete and met with her approval, you got that brilliant smile and the ultimate compliment. Beautiful. <laughs> she had her own way of saying it, hadn't she? Let's keep ma'am, mama, your friend in our hearts now, as she has held us all our lives, sitting by the fire, enjoying her cup of tea, book in hand, and that wonderful patchwork quilt of family, friends, and neighbors wrapped snugly round her. And now some friends of Michael's musicians would like to pay a tribute to Mam.
Michael's friends and in thanking Michael's friends, thank Regina Nathan and Nigel Bridge for the lovely music during our liturgy and her granddaughter Joyce for that wonderful slow air. And I think she'll be very pleased to see all the grandchildren and great grandchildren involved in the liturgy. Just two other little photographs. If you're coming to sympathise with the family, uh, they're here in the first two seats left and right. So if you come by the baptismal side, which is the old ground side of the church, and come across the, the front here, it'll be easier for everyone rather than have a big ruler bola. So come to the baptismal side, you can come across. Then, uh, secondly, then uh, after the burial, uh, the family would uh, love you join them, especially those of you who come long journeys uh, for some refreshments in the old ground. So our friend for over 25 years. Father Joe Horrigan now will lead us in our final prayers of commendation and farewell. So I invite you to stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Let us pray in silence for Mary Margaret. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Prayer of commendation. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Mary Margaret in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon Mary Margaret in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our sister forever. In peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. We pray together. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you too find eternal rest. Nanamanaharogs and Vikogs, the spirit nave. Amen.